how do we still improve? How do we feel like we're improving? How do we, you know, just what can we do to adjust? Improving cardio, flexibility, improving your diet. You wonder why he's so good. Those are so important and you don't need to leave your house to do that. It's all about technique. It's all about discipline. The whole point of jujitsu is being able to adapt. All right, so uh, here's another episode of From the Dojo Podcast with Danny. Daniel's not here today, but I got a special guest, Edsel. He's a brown belt under me, but man, he's got so much experience that um, I actually rely on a lot. So I figured he'd be awesome to um, have a conversation with. And to me, uh, we, we're, today we're going to focus on two major things, which is how do you, how does someone how should someone approach coming back to jiu-jitsu after a long layoff? And then we can go into details on that. We're going to get into that now. But, and then the other one was, you know, this is an interesting time. Edsel mentioned it was like, this might be the time a lot of people either want to or should consider different schools or, you know, whatever. But the, the reality is like where every single person in jiu-jitsu will have a situation where they are considering moving. They are considering whether for life, for college, for whatever. Um, and then uh, how do you approach that? How do you approach the stigma? How do you approach um, the actual uh, s- like sound steps of deciding whether a move is good or bad? You know what I mean? So um, I figure we just jump right into the um, how to come back. You know what I mean? I have a, I have a whole series of things that is pretty s- square with me. Like I- I've honed it in over time. But like whether it's from the pandemic or whether it's from an injury, whether it's from anything, there's going to be a point where you're not training. And then there's going to be a point where you're coming back to training. And there's a few things that I'd like to talk about. But right off the bat, Edsel, do you have any, do you have a game plan? Like, do you have protocol? Like what, 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 what's something other people need to know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. I think, I think, uh, you know, just, just to lay it out, you know, I've been thinking about it myself regarding you know, this is not my first time that uh, I've had a layoff, right? Uh, you know, uh, due to injury or, or life circumstances. But um, I think a lot of people, this might be their first time. Um, and and realistically, like it's it's different than most layoffs. But it, it you know, mentally, uh, it's all going to be very similar. The approach is going to be similar. The mindset uh, is going to be similar. But um, I think that you know, just kind of like this is just going to be very applicable to a lot of people's situation. Basically almost everybody who would be listening to this podcast either wants to train or is training um, and is going to be coming back from some time off. And so uh, I just really felt like this was a very important topic that I, I'd love to speak on since, like I said, I have a lot of uh, uh, personal experience in, in taking time off. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Uh, you brought up the idea. And I was like, Oh yeah, exactly. This is what's up now. Um, I I'm going to jump into my advice for people. Say someone says, um, and this is applies all of the above in my, in, in my opinion on all the various situations that you just, we were talking about right now, which is like, what, is it due an injury? Is it due to, you know, life stuff, people, uh, building a family and they, they come back later. I've, I've heard a lot of different reasoning for why people stop and come back. And I would say the number one thing, the number one thing is don't get hurt. That's the number one, absolute most number one. And you know, uh, so you brought it up is like, this is might be the first time people in their whole jujitsu, I would say like career or whatever, where this is the first time they're coming back. And um, I've been doing this shit for 16 years, 15, 16 years, and I've had many breaks, like don't get it twisted. If you do jujitsu, you're gonna have a lot of breaks. Simple as that. It's how you come back. And it's important. It's not just, uh, oh, I got a lot of uh, making up to do or Here's a couple, yeah, here's a couple pitfalls. Like I have a lot of making up to do. I'm not where I am when I left. And then uh, all the people that I trained with are now, boom, this much better than me automatically. What that does is um, creates a lot of anxiety and like this like FOMO situation where you're just like, oh fuck, I gotta, I gotta step it up. And uh, I, I implore people to not think of it that way. Don't think of it that way because, first of all, all that shit you can't control. Second of all, you, it's like, well, I can control my effort. You know what that effort needs to be geared towards? It needs to be geared towards approaching the game smart. And, like, when 
if you were working out already and then you were like, okay, now time to step it up. It's a special guest is coming to the gym or the guy that he's prepping for a tournament. I want to help him out or I'm prepping for a tournament. Yeah, step it up. But when you go from nothing to stepping up mentality, there's something will break. Something will not be uh, what you expected. You know what I'm saying? So uh, do not get into that type of mentality. I see it a lot. And to the most extreme case, if someone took a six, six years off, seven years off, eight years off, they start re- looking down at their rank and be like, am I this belt anymore? You know what I'm saying? Which we can go into deeper later, but like, I've seen that so many times. And then the general advice I would stay at the top is forget that. Don't get into your head. Uh, that rank is not your rank to control. So that just forget it. Just walk away. And then the, and then the major thing is don't get hurt. And w- my advice to people is come in and train, but do what you can. Because this is like, you know, don't forget, this is a marathon, not a sprint. The people who consider this a sprint are going to get hurt a lot. Like, bad injuries and then they rush their recovery and they come back in too soon and now they have like this reoccurring injury that's not good for them long term and so my whole thing is think about all the bad sides of rushing into things which highlights the importance of not rushing into it come and train don't train so hard that you can't train tomorrow be consistent lower that intensity and build that up over time but don't don't expect to do well your first day don't expect to Expect to be to be the worst on the mat. Even if you are, let's say you have a brown belt walking onto the mat, and then there's blue belts that are destroying you. Yo, the only person that's hurting is uh, your ego. That's the only thing. You'd be like, damn, I'm a brown belt. I should be doing better than this. And then that's when people get caught up and get hurt. Trust me, if jujitsu and ego and all that shit is a real thing, you should not rush it. You should not do anything. That blue belt that's marking you right now, give yourself a month or two. And then for eight years beyond, you're going to be beating his ass. So it's like it has nothing to do with that moment. It, that moment is there to get you to the point where you're up and running. But that's my number one thing I see all the time. People come in, they rush themselves, and then they're out for another week after the first week back because they're just so sore. Right. That's a guarantee. But if they get hurt, that they're out another three weeks. You know what I mean? So. Um, I think that's my biggest takeaway and we can get into the details in a bit, but, um, what do you think? And then, uh, what do you got for, yeah, for sure. For for sure. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, I think you, 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 you hit on a lot of my, the points for me, right. The same things that, um, that I, I focus on when I'm trying to come back or, or what I recommend or give uh, advice to for people who wanting to come back or to, you know, um, you know, are about to get, you know, they're like, Hey, I'm about to get surgery. You know, what should I expect? Uh, whatever it may be. Um, and so like the number one thing is establishing a routine, right? Because we all just got out of our routine. So let's, let's, let's apply it to the situation right now, right? We all went from going to work every day. Maybe we're working from home. Maybe we lost our jobs, whatever it may be. And, uh, and, and kind of like jump starting back our routine is going to be the number one focus. And I think should be um, like just the, the, the main priority uh, when you come back is trying to get yourself back in the gym. Like you were saying, it doesn't matter if that blue belt is working. You doesn't matter if you're, you know, your gi don't fit right anymore. It don't matter. Right. What matters is that you're just showing up every day. Uh, and then of course is trying to, uh, prepare yourself for some type of ego bashing, right? Like yeah, you're yeah. going to get hit in a weird way. Kind of like, I think, um, uh, Dan had mentioned it, uh, in a previous podcast with the idea that you're going to have some people who worked out every day, right? During this break, every day they're, you know, doing burpees, they're doing shrimps, they're running marathons. Who, who, who knows what people are doing, right? They're on their Peloton bike bikes, but, or you're going to have people, and I'm just going to go ahead and raise my hand like myself who hasn't been doing anything really. Um, both because not in the boat, because I'm lazy, but also because I, you know, I, I have been sick. And so, it, you know, it, you know, at first I started off like, Oh man, I'm going to get like, you know, I'm going to get like, 10 strong, you know, and I'm going to work out every day. And that lasted like three, four days. And then, you know, I, you know, I was in bed, sick, whatever. And so that's, that's it. And then the other one is your approach, kind of like you were talking about with the idea of just every day, taking it slow, looking at it for the long run and, and saying, okay, what am I going to look like in six months? Not what am I looking like in the first six hours? You know what yeah. I mean? Like that's just, that's not, that's not, that's not a smart way of looking at it. Um, and then trying to figure out how to adjust your fitness. 
Uh, you know, like you know, people are going to be exhausted in warmups. People are going to be exhausted after one round and, and making sure that they know how to dial it back rather than, you know, cause rolling's fun, right? Your body knows what to do. So you push yourself without realizing it. You know, I know for yeah. me, one of the first times I took a break and I came back, I was just training. Like I had n not taken any time off. It's like almost like you stop drinking and then you're just taking shots with the homies and then all of a sudden you're wasted. I was yeah, literally yeah. outside in front of the gym throwing up, dry heaving, yeah. because I just was like, oh, I'm fine. I'm just going to train, just like normal, because my body knows what to do. So I pushed it, and then all of a sudden I'm, you know, hyperventilating, and I'm getting dizzy, and I'm feeling weak, and all of a sudden I'm like outside dry heaving in the ba in a garbage can, you know? So uh, I think understanding how to dial back your fitness level, or, or understanding your current fitness level and, and dialing back your intensity is important. Um, and then realigning uh your progress like understanding progress milestones and not looking at what you used to use and having to readdress those um and then i think even before you show up currently like kind of like part of that ego thing is like my your your current ability level and not expecting it to be the same you know yeah, dude, so I like i i completely agree i think the uh the main thing is like here's some guidance that we're giving right and right. i'm putting myself in the in the shoes of the people that are listening to this or need to hear this there's two things like first give me some guidance okay good and then they're gonna have some issues with that guidance because um uh what they're what they're really doing is struggling with their own like you said uh their own idea of what's possible their own goals their own you know stuff like that and the first part is us giving you the keys and then the second part is teaching you how to drive okay like you have these keys but you're not you're struggling with how to use them you know what i'm saying so I think the number one thing, and, and this is going to be a recurring theme in all of jujitsu, is your ego, all right? You know, there are times when you can check your ego and, like, act accordingly because, um, you know, you were, you, everyone's had their first day. So when you go and you're much more experienced and you have to partner up with someone a lot less experienced than you and they're struggling through every movement. And then um, it's rare, generally, to see someone with more experience, like, roll their eyes and be like, oh, my God, come on, like, get with it, dude. Like, I in my 16 years of training and all that, I've rarely seen that frustration because the reality is we've all been there and then the ego's not really at play right now um, uh, because like, you know, you, you see yourself in them and you're trying to help them out. And part of jujitsu, in my opinion, like the definition of improving is helping other, the ability to help other people too. So like it's all tied together. So it makes sense. But when, when you're doing something you're not used to, which is taking a break and coming back, that is a skill in of it of it itself because um i just think about the guys that go really hard and then they're out in uh in four weeks they've trained for one week like two two days in the first week and then they're just super sore they come back the next week one class the next they might injure themselves and they're babying it for the rest you know what i mean so like if you're talking about four weeks and you're going hard but you've only been able to train one think about that roi like how is that going to help you but then if you chilled out if you like listen to your body and then like gauged your progress not in what you were able to do but the idea that you did what you didn't do like you didn't get hurt you didn't get hyper gassed you didn't you know what i'm saying if you if you change the perspective that in those four weeks even if you're at 20 percent capacity uh you train every day of those four weeks who's who's way ahead then you know what i mean so that's the reality of jiu-jitsu forget going back to jiu-jitsu like if you were just doing jiu-jitsu it you know this goes to the intensity level you bring onto the mat every day you can't go balls to the wall every day you literally can't because then you, you're you're just going to not be able to make it through the week um and it's 50 times more important to think about that when you come back to jiu-jitsu and like edsel and i like i think the first thing is it's it's good for lower belts to hear that people in our position like we've dealt with this like we didn't just constantly train for the next decade you know what i mean there have right. been times where i didn't train for like man i don't know there's definitely it's not uncommon if i do take a break it's like a couple weeks to a couple months that's just on some maybe injury maybe di different life situation whatever there was a there, but there were points in my life where i didn't train for like three years two years you know what i'm saying and so when people so i i just i just want people to know like life goes on you know jujitsu i always came back to jujitsu because jujitsu was there for me uh, but uh, life goes on and sometimes you do have to take a break it, but it's how you come back that's going to really dictate like the the progress that you make when you are trying to come back you know what I mean and 
out of all that said, it, it really pivots on your own ego. Like, um, you know, we talk about ego and how we're like we're uh, in control of it. But the reality is, dude, you know, at blue belt, purple belt, brown belt, black belt, I'm still struggling with ego stuff. It's different. Like once you peel the, the first layer of the onion, the second layer, and then the third layer, I'm like, what? what? I mean, the onion is getting smaller, so I'm improving overall, but every layer is just a unique set of circumstances. So um, I think that's a major thing. I think um, ego is a major thing. But when I say to someone who's first time coming back, it's like, hey, watch your ego. They're not going to understand what the hell I'm talking about. So um, I'm hoping that we can talk about a conceptual level. It's like ego, ego, ego. Just don't compete with anyone else. You're not even competing with yourself. You're just trying to get onto the racetrack, bro. Like you're just take your time. Um, you're doing it. You're going to dust off some stuff. You're going to like shake the cobwebs. This is why, um, in a, in a real ass NASCAR race or any type of formula one, they do shakedowns. Like they get the crew, they do dry runs. They, they, they might not push the engine or anything, but what they're doing is checking out the track. They're seeing how the car handles. They're seeing in this temperature situation, like how are the tires working and all that stuff. You need a shakedown and in everything in life, you need that. Like if I, when I was interviewing for internships, what I would do when I was in college, I would drive to the office like two days before, you know what I'm saying? And during the rush hour time, I had to be there, whatever. I saw where the front lobby was. I saw which desk looked like where the secretary would sit. I, I looked into the office. I see what floor they're at. I visualized and I physically went on and did all that because I didn't want that to be the hang up on my important day, right? So when it comes to training itself, your body is, is, the, is that complication. Your body is the one that will, ooh damn, did I just hear my knee tweak real quick? Like, or, oh my God, I'm good. I can't, I can't, I got through the warm up. I got the technique. Now I'm dry heaving in the toilet, but the, the freaking steak of the meal I'm missing. You know what I mean? Like I wanted to spar and then I can't. So th- you, you got to realize if you think about it everywhere else, it's, it's on the mat and off the mat. You can't just go right into training. It's, it's, it's uh, almost impossible. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, 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 for sure. So, like you mentioned that you you take a, a couple a couple long breaks, right? Um, so, I, you know, I, I wanted to share a, a long break that I had. Yeah. Um, but I figured since you, you know you were you had the mic, uh, I'd love to hear about you, you know a, a reason why you took a long break, and yeah. then kind of what your what your approach was, what your mindset was like, and what your progress looked like when you came back. Yeah, I'd say the first time. I took a big break was uh, when, so I, I went into a little bit in my first podcast with Rich, where we talked about my past, which is like, uh, I never finished high school. So I'm a high school dropout because I had like gang and drug issues and all this shit. Like I had to, I essentially left town to go to another part of the, of the state to do whatever I thought was I needed to do at the time. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. uh, unfortunately that meant jujitsu was not around in my life for like, I want to say a year and a half straight up like i wasn't hurt i wasn't i was just not in familiar territory i didn't have a car i didn't have money you know what i mean i was taking classes at like a technical school at the time um i went from socal to like norcal and it was like it was really different you know i mean different people i was just trying to figure out my day-to-day let alone training so there was no progress the only progress and we've talked about uh, a recent podcast was the closest thing i got to training was fighting like <laughs> I literally went to backyard barbecues and just like put money up to say, I will beat you up. I'll make you say uncle without throwing a single punch. Who's going to take that bet. And then that was like, I, that, I would say that's pretty unique. I don't have any, I don't know anyone that has that experience, but like, I literally was, I was like, well, I know how to, I have this confidence from jujitsu and like, I have no money and there's all these guys talking shit to me. Like, how do I make it? So that was, that was really, it. does that mean I've actually prog- progressed in my jujitsu? No, like technically ranked up. No, definitely not. Like, did I lose a lot? Yeah. I lost a lot of skill. Um, physically it, it was just downhill for me. Like just, I just see it as a life with jujitsu life without, it was all bad, but with jujitsu, it was all good. So um, I would say to, to give you a, uh, some color on when I wasn't training is that, but I still got some fights in, which was good just in general, but, that was but like, what, what was your, what was your, I mean, I, what I meant by progress, like when you came back, like uh-huh. when you, when you walk back in the gym, what was your mindset and, and what, how did you, like, what did your progress timeline look like for you? Yeah. It's, you know what, it's an interesting question because at that time 
I, I wish I heard the advice that I give people now because one of the things that someone at, I had a visitor at my school recently before the whole crazy shit. And then I was coaching them. I never met them before. They're just visiting and I was coaching them and he came up to me and he's like, damn, you saw what I was doing. Like we've never met, but you saw what I was doing and you, you gave me good advice at the moment. Like, how do you, how, I, he, and he was just a general question. Like, how do coaches become good coaches? Like you're a great, you're a good coach. Like, how does that even happen? He was just curious. But um, at that point I said, I'm not pulling anything new out. I'm literally, I made all the mistakes. Like I'm one of those weird situations where I made almost every mistake I can in jiu-jitsu. Um, and so that's why I love to teach because I want people to avoid the mistakes that I made. I'm not, I'm not a lead. I'm not like, look at what I do to learn. Like, even though I, I've learned a lot and I'm trying to do better. Uh, but the reality is like, I've made every mistake. So if anything, like learn from my mistake, that's where, that's where I come from. So um, it just happened to, he was playing this game, this style of jiu-jitsu that I used to play for like a year. And I was like, oh, that doesn't lead anywhere. This is the reason why. And then I just like broke it down. So like, imagine how much time I saved that dude if he listened, you know what I mean? Like, uh, like how to sort of course correct a little bit and how to approach jiu-jitsu. And so, um, you know, at the time when I came back to jiu-jitsu, it was, I, I wasn't in a rush to like get super good or anything. Like I was, and I came back home to SoCal and I was working. So priority was just like doing that. You know what I mean? Jiu-jitsu, what's great for me is that it, it, there was a place for jujitsu in my life and it had a different seat in the car th throughout my life. So in that situation, I didn't, it was, I was just happy to get a workout in, you know what I mean? Like get workout in, do some reps, spar, kick it with the homies. And then it was like my social circle. And then I went back to work, you know? So it was at the time I was going to school, I was working full time and trying to train, like training wasn't, I want to win that tournament training was like, I want to keep my sanity. You know what I mean? Like I want to like stay in shape. I was, I was, I was, I was in shape. I was like a circle. You know what I'm saying? Like I was, <laughs> I, I was not in shape. I was in one solid shape. And so I just wanted to like not get worse because I couldn't handle just finding a park and jogging. Like I didn't want to do that. Jiu Jitsu right. is like the funnest way to work out. So um, I think that, I think the major lesson there is like, jiu-jitsu is bigger than what you see it now like you can use jiu-jitsu for however you want to use it like for me it was therapy since day one sort of you know what i mean like very beginning it was self-defense and i realized how quickly it evolved because um you didn't really need to know much about jiu-jitsu or much jiu-jitsu to like make be effective on the street and stuff so um i just yeah it was more about reconnecting with the homies and then like reconnecting with my game and I never really pushed it. Like I, I knew better because I got hurt. Now there were different later on when I came back later on, I would push it and make all the mistakes again. Cause I just forgot or whatever. Right. So right. yeah, that's, that's how it was for me. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah. What was, what was your, what was your longest break? <laughs> so my long break. So it was, it was years. Like, I mean, I, I, I trained at like random gyms here or there, uh, you know, kind of just jumping into a class I yeah. trained for maybe like maybe two or three classes for a couple months, but I'll break it down. So basically I trained um, for about two years. It was like a year to two years. I don't know how exactly the time frame uh, when I first started, right? It, it started, I started and then like, well, like six months into my first started training, I, I, you know, I fought my first MMA fight. I trained for about a year or two and then I got divorced. Mm -hmm. I had a breakup with my wife. See, and then shit. Yeah, exactly. And a lot of people actually, that's when they start training. They're like, oh, you know, this is what I need. I need that, like you said, like the therapy. I need something to do with my time. And and what I wanted to do was, you know, go to bars and and, and meet chicks. Like that's that's yeah. what I wanted to do, right? And you're not gonna you don't really find chicks in a sweaty jujitsu gym. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it just doesn't happen, you know? Yeah. And uh, you know, it's funny because I, I have a great story where I remember one time it was like right when I got divorced, like right, right when I got it before I quit training. And I'm sitting I just finished a good rolling session and we're at one world and we're all sweaty and we're all sitting around. So we used to like powwow after training at yeah. one world. We all sit in a circle and just talk about fights, talk about how the training was, whatever, you know, do a little bit of open mat, who knows, but they also had CrossFit there. And so you could look into the other side of the gym and like, you have all these CrossFit like people. Right. And I remember this one dude, he's sitting there, he's got no shirt on. He's got his arm up on the, on the, you know, the rack and he's sitting there talking to these two chicks with these, you know, great butts. And I'm like sitting there going, and I look back at the dude that I'm training with 
and they're like, you know, nerding out on jujitsu. And I look back at this dude who I know I can kick his ass. Like, yeah. I'm like, if I, you know, but he's got the chicks. Like, I'm like, I'm sitting around hanging out with these sweaty dudes talking about how I can beat people up with like my special techniques. And he's over there just picking up dumbbells and, and kettlebells and the chicks are talking to him. I'm like, I'm doing something wrong. Uh, you know? So it was like one of those weird, like, like out of body experiences where I'm like, I should probably switch it up a bit. And instead of going over to the CrossFit side, I hit the bars, you know yeah. what I mean? So I was like, you know, my buddies are like, Hey, let's go out. You know, it was like thirsty yeah. Thursdays. Let's go out instead of training jujitsu. That's so, so funny. Anyway. It's like an epiphany moment. You just walk me through and it's like, it's a similar to the story of you watching UFC with your instructors yeah. and stuff. You're like, what the fuck are they talking about? Like you just yeah. removed yourself out of that situation. Right. Just saw like, it was very black and white. It was like, Oh shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I yeah. did. I, I don't know. I, I tend to, I guess I have those moments very often. Yeah, I guess that's what's up. <laughs> those are pivotal, pivotal moments. I remember those pivotal moments. Uh, but yeah, so, so yeah, I took yeah. that time off and it was like, I, you know, and I, like I said, I dibble dabbled here or there, you know, ref some MMA fights, ref some kickboxing fights. I did a bunch of different things. Um, uh, you know, trained very inconsistent. And then, uh, I walked into a place, there was a machine works in San Leandro, California. Mm. And, uh, this guy, Jeremy Atkins was teaching, was teaching there. It was his gym is brand new. And, uh, I walked in and it was like maybe six, four, six years later. Like it was a long break. Um, and I knew I had loved jujitsu. I don't know. I, you know, I, to this day, like I know kind of like the motivation of why I stopped, but I really don't know why I stopped. Right. Uh, Does that make sense? Like yeah. there's, there's no reason why I should have stopped except maybe money, time. I don't know. And, um, and so anyways, I walked into his gym and I remember I was like, Hey, uh, I want to start training jujitsu. I really like it. It was very affordable was, at the time. It was by far the, the most affordable jujitsu gym in the, in the Bay area. And I said, I said, but, you know, I remember back in the day when I was 24, 25, I used to get injured all the time. You uh -huh. know what I mean? So I'm just going to kind of take it easy if you don't mind. I'm going to just take it real. So I'm, I can only really promise one day a week. And that's what I did. I set myself this idea where I'm like, I'm going to go one day a week. Mm -hmm. I'd love to approach two, but I'm going to go one day a week. Instead of going five days a week, like I was five, six years ago. I'm going to go one day a week at least. That's my promise to myself. And, um, I, and I just reassessed kind of like my priority. Like I was saying, like just my approach was different. You know, my, my goal was different. I said, Hey, what am I trying to achieve by going to class? Instead of before it was like, all right, maybe I want to fight MMA, you know, you know, whatever it may be. And this time I was like, I just want to train jujitsu. Cause like you said, it's the funnest way of exercising. And, and I'm not a guy. There's a reason why I didn't go CrossFit because CrossFit's boring for me. You know what I mean? I Some that, people love yeah. it. Some people love it. It's cool but it's boring for me. And so the idea was I, I set that, 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 you know, um, I set that routine one day a week, at least, uh, I was going two days a week and, uh, you know, and, and instead of trying, you know, and, you know, I asked a lot of more questions because, you know, I had had years of training. Um, but it, you know, and, and plus I wrestled and did judo and other things as well. I, you know, that, that also got sprinkled in, uh, throughout my, my lifetime as a martial artist. Uh, but, what was funny was that because I approached it differently, one, I didn't get injured mm. as much, right? I, I, rel I relied on the fact that if I'm tired, I take a break. If I need to get something to drink, I'm going to get something to drink. If I, if I feel stress or, or a lot of pain or, or pressure, I'm just going to, I'm going to tap. You know what I mean? Like I, I just put myself in a position where I'm older. I knew I was older. I accepted the fact that I was out of shape. I was older. And regardless of the years that I have as a martial artist, it didn't matter based off of what these guys were doing. Cause they're all there every day, you know, and I couldn't match their, I couldn't match their intensity. I couldn't match a lot of things. Uh, but what was interesting uh, for me, the most part of it, I remember I even called up a buddy of mine, like six months into training. I called up a buddy of mine and I said, Hey dude, I think I'm better than I was in six months here than I was ever before. Mm. And I think it was because I took that time to conceptually understand what jujitsu was about rather than just trying to win every round of rolling. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I, it didn't matter. I, don't get me wrong. I still want to uh, execute and perform well, but I wasn't, that wasn't my focus. My focus was trying to stick to a routine and enjoying and trying to understand what I was doing every day and showing up, you know? 
bro like you just hit a few things that like it's um this is the difference between uh novice and intermediate and advanced is like how you it's like let's say you were asked a, a single question at white belt purple belt and now brown belt right it's like you would have a totally different answer depending right. on the question most jujitsu questions you would have a totally different answer and so like one of the things you brought up was and i actually say this a lot to people it's like hey they say how many days a week is like the optimal time amount to like get better in this game? And I was like, eh, three to four, like anything more than that. It's just like icing on the cake, but three to four, they're like, all right, for sure. And then like, they just no, don't show up. And, and I hit them up like, what's up, what's going on? And he's like, Oh, I can only make it once a week. So it's like, I can't, you know, I'm not going to progress. I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> no, that's not, that's not how it works. It's like, I get how someone can infer that, but that is so like black and white thinking. It's not black and white. The reality is jujitsu is a skilled, it's a skill-based martial art, first and foremost. It's like knowledge. Like you can get better in jujitsu just by sitting on the bench and watching a class. Like it it's you know, people put too much weight on the sparring. Yes, it's what makes jujitsu unique, the sparring for sure. It's like a big part of it. But uh, but people sleep on the technique, people sl sleep on the the knowledge that you get dropped on by just being in the room you know what i mean like you know so it's like so what i'm saying is you, know, <laughs> you mentioned that oh i'm gonna promise myself one time a week to do this thing and then at the end of it you know based on the changes and how your perspective how you approach the training all that you get you got way more progress in that time compared to other times of that same timeline and i that is not some made-up shit that's real because it's like I tell people, hey, three to four is like optimal because anything more like is cherry, it's, it's a cherry on top, but you might run the risk of getting hurt a lot. Uh, right. But if you do it once a week, it's better than zero times a week. So, uh, so I was thinking about it because, you know, with your idea of like, let me just stick to once a week. There's a lot of people that's ready to come back, but they can only give once a week and they're still telling themselves, this is not enough. Let me just wait right. a little longer. Mm -hmm. No, that's on bullshit. That's bullshit. Like, think about this. If you if you waited an extra year, you know, and then you you uh you didn't train, but then it, instead you actually said, you know what, I'm giving myself one time a week. In that year, you're telling me that that guy that went once a week isn't massively better than the guy who did who waited that year. Right. So right. just think about it. Just think about it like that, guys. It's like it's it's really simple. Zero one is better than zero, and it's like it really is that way because yeah, the uh, you keeping your timing sharp or whatever you might not be progressing like you want to progress but realize guys you don't want to be the person that started jiu-jitsu eight years ago you've trained for four years and you're looking back at all the people you started with and they're all like brown belts and you're sitting around with the blue belt four stripe you do not want to be that person especially if you say you love jiu-jitsu like i've had people tell me they love jiu-jitsu i'm like why aren't you training he's like well i'm not going to get no you're talking yourself out of improving like uh uh Proof is in the pudding with the story that Etzel just told. It's like, come in, train, even if you can't spar, even if you can't make it through the class, you're not hurting anything. You're only making things better. So it's like, yeah, uh, I just want to like myth bust right there because uh, it's, it's even if it's once a week, every other week, dude, that is way better. Think about it as a, in a year. It's not as, you know, there is such thing as skill being like a leaky bucket. You fill it with water and a few comes out. Yeah. 100. I've, I forgot so many techniques, right? Way more techniques than I actually use. Like I've forgot way more. I can, I added, actually like sat down and thought about that. But the reality is it doesn't, the, 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 the hole isn't at the bottom of the bucket. It's like at midway through the bucket. Like there's a certain point in time where you retain something for the rest of your life. Right. Right. Rest right. of your life. What martial artist hasn't retained something that goes deep into their 80s, 90s, whatever? Any lesson, any any epiphany moment, any experience, you're missing out on that. And so that's the that's want to talk about in that regard. You yeah, you want to say something? Yeah, no, no. I was I was gonna say it, you know the way that I like to explain it to people sometimes where I go any any uh I guess you would say kind of like activity that you like to do snowboarding right or surfing. Uh, rock climbing, whatever it may be, you don't do that every day, right? And people are like, oh, well, it, you know, I only go snowboarding three times a year. And they still see improvement three yeah. times a year. Wow, you're, yeah. You're right? right. Yeah. You're like, I'm so much better than I was. <laughs> the, 
and, and what it is is that you just expect you just you've just set your priorities and 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 what the accountability looks like for that activity right and don't get me wrong the guys that go and live and work on those slopes every day you're never going to be as good as them you're mm-hmm. never going to catch up to them the guy who quit his job and lives in a bungalow on the beach you're never going to be as good of a surfer than him but the question is, why are you like we? I see this all the time. I, I did this myself, where I remember when I first started wanting to fight MMA, I sat there and I looked and I said, GSP's my age and he's already a world champion. Gilbert Melendez is my age and he's already, you know, Strike Force champion. What am I doing? Why waste my time? Mm-hmm. And it's like, why am I comparing myself to those guys? Yeah. Like, like, is that really my goal? And that's, you know, like I said, you really have to realign your your end goal to look at like how much effort and how much time you want to put into it. And like you said, if you love jujitsu, do jujitsu, right? Like I, if, if someone loves snowboarding, they don't do it every day. They don't keep moving around with the seasons to make sure they're surfing or snowboarding every day that it's snowing around them. They don't yeah. do that. You know? So, so why do you, why, why people feel that they have to do that with jujitsu is kind of beyond me. You know? Yeah, no. And it, you know, it's one of those things like I put myself in the shoes of the people that hasn't, thought about it that way you know i to me it's one of those things where you hear one person say it one time and it just makes sense it's like i that makes sense shit why did i you know what i mean like uh um uh now people might disagree but first time i had them i remember having a moment where it's like hey when do you tip if you do a if you do delivery or takeout like do you tip i'm like well delivery yeah because they brought it to you but takeout no and then i was like how about this you're you're eating you're ordering chinese food for your entire family that's like seven people do you know how much they boxed it they they wrapped it they pre- they prepared it they placed the thing in the way and then they got your name ready and it's off to the side it took someone to do that you know what i mean just as it takes someone to deliver that shit to you it's like yeah they might i'm not saying they owe, you owe them way more money for doing that versus delivery but you know don't don't discount the idea that they did something extra they like they did it a particular way and all that and i was like Oh, I only needed to hear that one time. You're like, you know, you're, you're, you're right. I mean, like, I'm not, I'm not in a position where I'm like counting my pennies. You know what I mean? So like, yeah, why not? Because or else why the fuck am I ordering Chinese food? You know what I mean? Like make some <laughs> peanut butter sandwiches or some shit. But, but it's, I think it's one of those things where it's like, literally they just need, someone needs to just hear what we're talking about and be like, oh, that makes sense. Shit. All right. You know what I mean? So yeah, you're completely right. It's like, the, and you, you pin the, the actual, the, the, the source of that thinking, which is everyone's, everyone's built to compare themselves with other people. Right. You know what yeah, I mean? Because how, how else do you identify progress? How else do you identify yeah. success if you don't have a measuring stick? But yeah. The question, are you using the right measuring stick? That's right. That's right. right? No, no, exactly. Like I, cause then I remember having that concept when I was a younger person. I think most people, I mean, I, you know, just because you know, what's right doesn't mean you're actually doing it. But part of the, part of the progress is understanding what's right and wrong. And then like one of the things when it comes to what you, what each individual does is realize that you should, I think the number one tragedy, like I'm exposed to like Asian dudes, Asian women, men, whatever. is like a, a lot of times they're living the life that their parents want them to live. And it's like culturally more uh, abundant in like Asian culture for some reason. I don't know why, because there's guilt and then there's shame. And then there's, I don't want to let them down. Like they did so much for me. I'm like, I get that. But if you're doing something for someone else, you're not going to really be happy doing it. You know what I mean? And so, right. so you got to sort of, it becomes nuanced. It's not bl- black and white. You know what I mean? Same thing with jujitsu is like that whole con- concept is like, well, I, I want to get really good because low, key, they didn't tell you this, but I want to beat that guy that's been training when, you know, he's my rival, but it's like, yeah, you're never going to beat him if you don't train. Like, I don't get it. Like, but you gotta, the sooner you start to realize like you should be tracking yourself and not other people, like it, it actually hurts you more to track other people because it makes you not want to train. And it's like, well, tell me all the reasons why you love Jesus. Well, it, it keeps me in shape. It keeps my mind sharp. I'm learning a skill. And it's like, okay, at what point did I hear, I get to beat that guy up? Like that one guy, freaking Sean O'Malley or whatever. Like I want to beat that guy. It's like, that's the, my number one reason I do it. And the only time I've ever heard that was like brothers, you know what I mean? Right. So it's like, okay, is that guy your blood brother? It's like, no, I'm not, I've never met him before Jiu Jitsu. I was like, okay, so clearly you're not here for him. You came through that door before you ever knew who that guy was. So it's like, stop doing that. Stop doing that to yourself. Cause now you're just 
you're losing out on experiencing something and experiencing it in a way like a deeper and deeper way of experiencing something that we in life don't get a chance to do outside of like martial arts or some other hobby but it's like always limited to one or two things so it's like you're gonna rob yourself out of that but you you talk to yourself out of that you know what i mean so i see that so many times in a lot of things and in particular how do i come back you know what i mean yeah like i i for me specifically like since i took that long break you know i remember when i trained at one world there's two guys there uh kyle and fuki and they both Mm. started after me right so i was there first and you know, like I remember I ended up going back over to one world when I was training, when I started training again, still with a white belt on. Right. Yeah. And I, I walk in and Kyle's there and Fuki's teaching the class. Fuki's a black belt. Kyle's a black belt. Yeah. You know, and we start to roll and Kyle, Kyle was 14 or 13 years old when he started with us. Right. He was a kid. I was 24. So I'm 10 years older than him. You know what I mean? And I remember that dude, like literally he walks over, you know, we, you know, a bump, a fist bump. And he goes, dude, he goes, I'm so excited. He goes, I get to pay you back for all those times you <laughs> wish me when I was a kid. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and instead of feeling like, Oh crap, you know, like, like my ego is shot. It was, I felt, I felt proud and excited that this kid made it something yeah. like that. I couldn't achieve. I was happy that he was right. Yeah. And Fuki's teaching the class and I'm sitting there going, man, dude, like I remember when Mike was a brown belt and there was no black belts here. And now there's, you know, three black belts here. Like that's, you know what I mean? And so I, I was looking at is, yeah, it, I missed out on it. There's a, like a level of FOMO, right? Like I missed out. I made the mistake of giving up or, or quitting. Right. Uh, but realistically, <laughs> like instead of getting down on myself, I was congratulating them for all the things that they achieved. You know what I mean? And, and it was kind of like, Oh man, I wish I was there, but I, at least I was there in the beginning and I was able to see, how you guys started and now I could see like the, the, the fruits of their labors rather than focusing only on my own. What was, what was your rank at the time you came back and that situation happened? I was white the whole oh, time. Okay. Oh, okay. The whole wow. time. I never got promoted as a, as a white belt. Uh, I mean, when I first started at One World. You know, so, like, you know I, I bring that up because it's like, I think that speaks more to you as a person because like, it was like, that's the homie, like what's good for him is awesome. Like, I think a lot of people when they're white belt, and then they hear that they're like motherfucker you know what i mean like they'll get like you know no i've seen that more often than what you just said you know what I mean? well, you know what you know what's funny like i didn't realize i feel like i would have had more and this is just me like trying to like self-analyze myself yeah i think yeah. i would have had more pressure and more stress walking into a gym with a color belt on i would have uh... never went and trained anywhere like, like I said, I was dabbling here. I'd walk, yeah, over, you know, yeah. I'd like, hey, we're going to have a class. Cool. I can just put on my white belt, walk in, no pressure, right? The moment I put a color on, now all of a sudden people expect something from me. Yeah, if I yeah. walk in with a white belt or anybody walks in with a white belt, you, you're you excited when they can shrimp. They know how to do warm ups, yeah, and yeah. you don't have to teach them how to break fall. And they, you could just teach technique. As an instructor, you're like amazing. As a, as a, as a training partner, you're like, Oh, cool. This guy can, I can, I don't have to worry about them spazzing out on me and headbutting me or, you know, fish hooking my eyeball. You're like, all right, cool. I can just train. But as the individual, you're, you're like, as a blue belt, you're or a purple belt or any color belt. That's not even a black belt. You know, you walked into gyms with a belt on and there's this like, okay, there's a measure and there's another measuring stick now. And they're looking at you going, now what's this guy all about? Versus with a white belt, there's none of that. Yeah, and I, I think, yeah, I think I was lucky, man. As I, I, I feel like if I was, you know, you know, we would talk about blue belts quitting all the time. If I was a blue belt, I might not have ever come back. Okay, because so I stayed as a white belt, it, it, it was easier for me. I believe, I believe. Maybe I just myself, but that's how I believe. No, I feel you. I mean, like that's a very simple trap to get into, is which was sort of I was trying to get it there. Like first of all, uh, uh me as an instructor it doesn't matter if you're a white belt or whatever like i i i always have two sides of the story it's like what am i looking at like all my years of experience i'm gonna break this shit down i was like okay uh white belt three stripe that's nice that means he's been doing jiu-jitsu for a while okay cauliflower ear oof maybe a wrestler in the past let me okay i keep my on it on him and then he said, and I asked him, how long have you been training? He goes, oh, two months. I'm like, okay, three strikes, two months. Okay, is this motherfucker lying now? Like, you know, there's always like, there's that. 
but like yeah, just, yeah. every color I do the same. It's like, you're a purple. Okay. Like, let's see. You know what I mean? I expect these things, not these things, but it's still a different set of problems. Like, let me see, be, be nice, respect will give them respect unless they start losing that. You know what I mean? And then justice needs to be done. But, um, so that, there's that. So for me, I've always never seen a color and be like, whew, you know what I mean? I was just like, oh shit. Okay. This is, I recalibrate the mind, but like, how do I make sure that the, the people I'm training with is safe? And then this person is treated really well, but still maintaining some semblance of uh, the ability to react right away. If something bad goes down, you know, and catch something early. So I'm always thinking about that, but the, you, this is where it goes back to sort of a topic we were talking about earlier was ego and the colored belt. Holy crap. Yeah. You know, when, you know, I think when we were talking about advice for people coming back, I'm, I'm picturing someone that's like white belt, uh, maybe older, you know what I mean? Like that's, you know, there's all these different scenarios, but when you talk about colored belts now, mm -hmm. it, it's yes, I gave you the keys, but you know, the thing about the colored belt and why ego is such a beast of a fucking thing in jujitsu is because the onion is getting smaller, but for every layer, it gets different. It's a physical different layer. So like what color belts do now, what th their version of ego is like, uh, they will present their, their perspective as utmost respect. But the, what they're really doing is hiding behind it because they're trying to protect the ego. What do I mean by that? I'm talking about the guy who's a four stripe blue belt, right? And he quit. And it took five years. This is not, this, that's not a little bit of time. It's a lot of time. Five years off, seven years off. And they come back and then they're like, uh, you know what? That was seven years ago. It's like a whole lifetime away. You know, I was on the cusp of purple at the time, but things changed. The game changed. You know, I'll walk in with the four stride white. You feel me? And then like, they'll do that kind of shit. And mm -hmm. I'm just like, that needs to be addressed because it's like, that is not it, bro. That is, do not do that ever because um, it's it's one hundred percent an ego move. I've had people argue with me and be like, "Hey, how's it ego if I just respect the game so much and like, you know, I am not performing at that level and um, I don't know if I was at the level at the time. Now that I think about it, and like they're doing all this shit and they're like, I just respect the game so much, and I respect you so much." that I'm going to like downgrade myself to the rank that I find appropriate uh, because, you know, I'm trying to respect you and then, and then we'll fucking, you yeah. know, we'll go from there. And then the problem is, like I said, you and I will both agree that, you know, if you were there in the past, you will get there a lot faster than if you've never been there before. Right. So right. a white belt four stripe and a quote unquote white belt four stripe that used to be a blue belt four stripe walks into the door Yes, that white belt four stripe that's been training will beat the brakes off the, the, the dude who's been training a long time ago. But give that guy two months and he's lapped that white belt, right? right. So it's like, you guys are thinking about the short term. You're not thinking about the long term. You're not, you're not realizing that once the, the groove is set, all you got to do is grease that bitch, dust off the cobwebs, and you're back at it. Like that's, that, remember I said jujitsu is like that. Like, it's not just the physical aspect, it's the mental, the knowledge. Like if you have, if you can't do an arm bar, but you know of five different arm bars that you've done in the past against the other person who not only can't do the arm bar, but only knows one and barely remembers it. Yeah. You tell him you don't have an advantage. You know, you trip it, you muff, you trip. And it pisses me off because it's like, who gives people the right to demote themselves other than their instructor? You know what I mean? Well, uh, well you know, it's funny is that you say that because like, like if you, if you don't feel like it's respectful to promote yourself then it shouldn't be respectful for you to demote yourself right it's it's the same thing right uh it, it's just you know uh, you know opposite side of the coin it's the same thing um you know a big topic that came up a couple years back was uh Inton Inoue do you remember when Inton Inoue wanted to demote himself down to purple yeah that's some ego shit right and, and he and he again like Inton Inoue is one of those people I mean fucking i mean he is a monster of a man right when it comes to mental ability physical ability the dude's a, a killer he was a, a great mma fighter uh you know just a technician when it came to jujitsu um and he took i don't know how long let's say 10 15 years off from training pure jujitsu because he did mma and then he just didn't really train a whole lot you know he just kind of took time off and he said he wanted to do jujitsu again 
And he was like, dude, he was like, all these guys know so much more jujitsu than me. He's like, I can't even compete. And I don't know if it was him losing to these guys or literally him thinking like, these guys know leg lock game. These guys know Barambolo. These guys know, you know, right now it'd be like worm guard. Like everybody has all these things that they know or that they don't know. And he was like, I'm going to build myself from a black belt, multi-stripe black belt to a purple belt. He was like, that's where I feel like I am. You know, and, and granted, he's, he's one of those people that could probably self-evaluate his own ability, but it's not fair. Like, he can't compete. You're not going to compete. Incident away can't compete at a purple belt. So why are you wearing that purple belt? But, well, yeah. you know? No, no, I, no it's like, here's a, here's a, like, right off the bat, this is a nuanced issue here, especially with um, incident. You actually bring up an amazing example because I, I forgot about that. You know what yeah. I mean? But like you bring up a, a crazy event example because the context is this uh, Yamato Damashi or whatever. You know, yeah. remember that shit? Like yeah, he yeah. was he was my guy in pride. He he armbarred uh, Randy Couture in Hawaii. You know what I'm saying? His mm -hmm. brother's also a jiu-jitsu black belt. They were both tennis pros essentially. They they moved to Japan and like learned the link. Like they went all balls out and they have so much respect it, it from me from any fighter any mixed martial arts fan mm -hmm. like jujitsu all the above right he would walk into the 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 ring with the gi on and have all it patched up and shit it was so cool he represented hawaii it was so sick um and he's all about honor and discipline and all that stuff and but here's the thing like as someone who hasn't reached that level before and i'm not even talking about fame of fighting like that's a whole nother level i'm talking about have not even made it to purple belt, have not even made it to brown or whatever they'll see what um uh instant anyway is doing and they'll be misled because they'll see like wow i get where he's coming from that is super respect what a way to humble that himself right. wow you're right you know jujitsu in the 90s to jujitsu now like it's different yeah no 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 stop stop that shit no that's some bullshit because you got to realize that he 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 probably felt some, and I'm not, I'm not saying that even he knew consciously that how it could be ego. People could talk themselves into doing a bunch of weird shit for weird yeah. reasons. You know what I mean? But the reality is, is you have to respect the rank and you don't respect the rank by playing hopscotch with it. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. It's not hot potato. Like you reach a level and then you improve or you don't, but you don't go, you don't, you don't just you know what? I, you don't promote yourself to a black belt and you don't take off a black belt because I'll, I'll put it. This is the example that I give growing up. Uh, I didn't really do any martial arts. I did like three classes of Taekwondo, maybe like a little bit of judo when I was younger, you know, before I started jujitsu up until being birthed to jujitsu, it was like sprinkling a shit. I just remember like being in jeans and everyone was like, I got geese on. I'm like, what the fuck am I? And then that was it. You know what I mean? But uh, my dad was, uh, he got his black belt as a, like a middle schooler in Korea. Like this was at a time when, you know, uh, uh, Vietnam war didn't happen. Like he was born in the fifties. Like he was poor in the countryside and, you know, he, he picked up judo because he found out that if he won some tournaments, he can get scholarship to go to high school. Cause you have to pay to go to high school in Korea. And he, he, he hated judo. He absolutely hated it. Right. He absolutely hated it. He was just like, there's no other way to get, get into high school. I want to go to high school. And then so he trained his ass off and then he won tournaments. He beat dudes. He was invited to like college level judo training. He was on like junior Olympic, like um, rosters and stuff. He was getting uh, like private scholarships from people like millionaires who hated, who wanted a Korean judo team to be the best for this year. And you know, at, you're at this age. So at, by the time you're 21, you're going to be, so th this is like a serious deal. And he was like really respected and, uh, but he hated it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, but okay, so fast forward, he's like in his late sixties now, and as far as I'm concerned, he's a motherfucking black belt. Right. You motherfuckers, you telling me you put him in a room full of green belt judo, judoka? You know what I mean? That just can barely do a lot of tech. My dad would get murdered. He would break something for sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But you telling me that like he is because he can't perform because he does he he. He doesn't know the new tricks because he doesn't know the new technique. He doesn't know the rule set. He doesn't know any of that. You're telling me that he, if he was really respected the game, that he would demote himself. You know right. what I'm saying? So it's just like, it doesn't make sense. Like, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's just, it, I don't get it. Like, 
there you mean that a black belt so this goes into a whole topic of what a black belt is you know what i mean but so i don't want to talk about that my main thing is just like guys the only, like when i see i actually when i was in when i was in college i started a jiu-jitsu program with my buddy christian and there was a there was a kid and then he was he was pretty good he was a white belt and i and i found out later he was a blue belt at another school Mm. and he he had a white belt this whole time i didn't and i asked him straight up he's like are you a white belt what are you and he's like oh well you know all this bullshit right and i was and then i i i was like bro do you respect your instructor though and he was like what are you talking about yeah he's the man he's awesome when i come back home i'm gonna go right back to training with him and he's like uh so he gave you your blue belt he's like yeah i gave him my blue belt and he's like so who gave you your white belt and he was like well i thought i wasn't you know i haven't trained in a while and you know he's a college age kid so he's you know ego right but he doesn't know that he doesn't realize and well i haven't trained in a while and like you know i'm just not at that level i didn't know what level you guys were at you know my school's small and they're just giving me all these excuses right i'm like yo if i called your coach right now he knew you're still training right and then but i i asked why he has a white belt on he would flip the fuck out he would flip so it's funny you say that because that's that conversation you just said if i called your coach and that's exactly what changed Instant in a way's mind. When someone's like, go and call John Lewis. Uh, go and talk to him who I gave you that. your black belt. Yeah. And he's like, after talking to John Lewis, I realize I need to keep the black belt on. Because it, only, it, 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 it doesn't make sense for me to, to, to switch it. Like you said, because you still have the knowledge, right? So if you look at anything, right? If you look at any activity, let, let, we talk about, people talk about it a lot in uh, boxing, but it, it's same thing in MMA, same thing in jiu-jitsu. The first thing you lose is timing right? Uh, so you get injured, you lose timing. That's what you lose. Realistically, that's, it's not the strength. The strength is the last thing to leave. First thing you lose is timing. Next thing you lose is speed. Then the last thing you lose is strength. That's why you can have guys that fight MMA who are big time boxers, like guys that hit hard, you know, like just punchers, good punchers. They can fight until they're in their mid forties, right? Because they have that power in their hand. Doesn't matter about speed. Like look at Dan Henderson, man. That dude was fighting until I don't know how old he was. Right. Yeah. Um, and so I think a lot of people, they, you know, incident away or even having that conversation with, was it Christian or whoever it was, right. Making it go back to their coach and making them realize, yeah, I lost the timing. Yeah. I lost the speed. It's been so long. Yeah. I've lost the strength, but you almost never lose. Like you said, it's a bucket, right? So you never lose down below this. Yes. You never lose yeah. below that. Yeah. And so it's like, you can't go back to where you were because you've already gone past it yeah there is nothing that can happen in your life that you know th let's think about this guys like this is this is a major piece of jiu-jitsu there's nothing that could and i'm trying to think about it there's nothing that could possibly happen to you that makes you the exact same level as if you your first day of jiu-jitsu right i don't care if you get in a massive car accident i don't care if you have you lost a big portion of family in a, in an airplane crash and you just mentally did, like, it's just so shocking and you don't know, you lost a part of you, dude. And it's, I'm just talking about some tragic shit, but the reality I'm, I'm saying that I hope no one goes through that, but I'm saying that because you can't make that bucket go empty. Right. You know, it just physically, impo it's physically impossible. You tell me you're not about, you tell me you know how to do a forward roll. Like, well, I can't do it now. I broke my back, but I know how to do it. It's like, who in their right mind can go to someone who's a, a brown belt, they go and get in a massive car accident, and they come back to the gym every day, like they're in their wheelchair, they can't physically train, but they, you know, they're there, and they want to be there, they just can't. Tell me one coach that'll be like, you know what, you can't even get on the mat, like, my bad, like, you're a blue belt. You know what I mean? Like, I can't have you representing me like this. This is a shame. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, coach. And if that, I wish, like, I, I, it's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And you if it does happen, fuck that coach. Like, you don't want to be part of that team the, anyway. The only time that ever happens is when you come from a different gym. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, here's the Dude. thing. Here's the thing. This goes back to, this goes back to the main question, which is, you know, you're bringing up an interesting components of this because i'm trying to like dispel the ideas like just leave your motherfucking belt alone right. you know what i mean yeah. and who cares if you're gonna get fucked up on the mat you will get better and uh if you can only make it once a week do it it's better than nothing but you're right, right. let me give you an example uh crone gracie's academy in santa monica 
West LA area, somewhere like that. I've trained there a few times. If you decide to join the school, what they do is they give you a belt of your same rank, but they put a, there's a stripe down the middle of the belt. And un, they, until he's ready to give you the belt himself, he, he will make you wear that belt until like he's ready, right? And I will tell everyone, this is not common. This is quite rare. This is something that, you know, and the reason why no one's flaming them for them because they're part of the heritage. They're straight from the source. Like, um, uh, there are Gracies. And so, like, they're, you know, Gracies are famous for having their own way of doing things academy to academy. Right. They're famous for that. So, you know, the way Henzo, like, Henzo awards no-gi black belts, whereas, uh, like, other schools, they're like, we don't have a belt system for no-gi. You know right. what I mean? So, there are examples of that, but but again, this it doesn't go against what we're saying right now, which is let the coach decide. You know what I mean? Like let the person that's been there and done that decide. Because if you're if you've never taken a study, if you never study physics, and then you're telling me about um uh like fucking uh, the way the comet is gonna hit the earth, I was like, bro, like you're you're out of pocket. You're out of pocket right now. You're you have no right to talk about it. I can't even respect your your statement right now because uh, you know what i mean so you bring up a great point and it's like to keep your belt on come to train the sooner you get to training and the sooner you get that one so once one class a week out of the way the faster you'll be up to speed the faster you'll be having fun at like fun progressing you know what i'm saying like it you know the the, the race to getting up to pace it's not a fun one it's a challenge it yeah. needs to be approached carefully but there are some hangups that people are having that you need to get the fuck rid of right away. And that's looking at your belt and being like, what should I even, no, don't even get, don't walk down there. Like if you're, if you're a black belt going back on the mat, yes, you're going to get fucked up by white, white belts, blue belts, purple belts, you know, depending on your situation. Right. But it's like, in no way does like realize that no one really cares. Like no white belt's going to tap you and you're like, you're heaving and you got white, foam coming out your your neck and being like yo that was tough good shit white post not gonna go up to the, his instructor and tap him on the shoulder like hey i just tapped him out like he shit huh and it, every black belt will tell that white belt he's like yo are you stupid this dude's just coming back like if you're gonna keep that up for two more months and see if you're gonna say that ever again you know what i mean so it just let's play it out and it just doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense a lot of you guys are like not cut like come back and be smart about it and then be careful. But the people that are doing these mental games about their rank, where they're at, where they want to be, all this stuff, they're comparing themselves to, don't fall for that trap. Don't fall for it. That's a, that's a super big trap. People, a lot of people fall into, do not do it. Right. No, for sure. For sure. Now, I, I it's funny that you mentioned that because uh, I remember I was uh, listening to, I want to think it was a podcast. It was either a podcast or an article written on Emily Kwok. And uh, I, I know I'm familiar with her. Yeah. And, and she's a world champion. Uh, you know, she's world champion. And I think she was, I, I'm gonna, I might get the trend the transition wrong. She either went from Henzo's to Marcelo's yeah, or from right. Marcelo's to Henzo's. I don't remember. I think okay. it was from, I think it was from Henzo's to Marcelo's. I could yeah, be I wrong. Think so. I think yeah. so. I think that's right. Okay. So she was saying like how it was so hard to deal with the different transition from one gym to another. So even, even people who are continuously training at a world champion level, switching environment in itself was exactly what you're talking about, where it's like, like, you, you know, you have these uh, color belts or, or people who are lower ranked than her who are going, oh, she's not that good. She's not that good. And she talked about the mentality of how she had to switch in her mind that it's different. They have different pace. They have different uh, techniques and she's learning what every person's doing. And so even somebody who's still continuously training, that transition is still, uh, you know, a, a hump, a, a, you know, mm -hmm. there's still a learning curve to that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, you know, I mean, we're talking about it currently right now in the idea of, of taking time off, but the fact that even not taking time off, just any transition, any change of environment, uh, requires a, a, a steep learning curve of some sort. You know what I mean? There's still an obstacle that you have to overcome, whether it be physically or mentally, um, or just, just environmentally, just trying to get used to your environment. That's a, that's a great point. That's something, that's a topic we'll talk about. You know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, that's a great point you brought up is like, it's challenging enough just transitioning, 
but when you take a break and you come back to a different school, it's, it, you know what? I find it, it's probably less challenging for, in that situation because you're just focused on trying to get back up to speed. Yeah. You know what I mean? And whether it's in a new environment or a tried and true environment, like it will take time just because you go back to a gym that, you know, every, all the ins and outs, all the personality quirks, the culture. Yeah, that's an advantage, but it doesn't really change the fact that your body will take time to heal and get stronger and heal and get stronger, get used to that flexibility, the mobility of the hips and the, you know, shit like that, that you lose over time. It's like the timing, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's important to know, uh, it's, it's, you know, I get it. I get that it's hard. It's hard to transition. It's hard to come back. But with the, the points that we talked about, I think that's like, you have everything you need to do it. Notice how we we're really talking about mentality and we're not giving you like, Oh, make sure when you do your first four roll that you're loosened up and warmed up and all this other stuff is like, that's so small. That is so small. The main thing is get your head right. You know, and if you're acting on an assumption or you're acting on something, stress test that something, stress test it. You know what I mean? It's like, well, I didn't want to train once a week because blah, blah. And you're like, okay, stop right there. Let's, let's ask about the blah, blah, blah that you just said. Stress test that and ask yourself, like, is this the right way to think? And a lot of times it's, it's rough, but you need someone that's been there, done that to help you walk you through it. You know what I mean? So I'm um, hopefully that um, this episode, like we went over a lot of good things, a lot of conceptual things. We even had specific scenarios. We talked about our experience. The main thing for me is take it slow. And if you're worried about getting your, your shit fucked up in the very beginning of you coming back, well, guess what? You're going to get your shit fucked up. Like it's, it, I mean, if you didn't, then jujitsu is not real. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like <laughs> jujitsu is real. So like hit, chill out, expect to get your licks. Um, yeah, you'll get, you'll get some of yours in there, but you're going to get fucked up for sure. And then you come back and then like, at least you're not, at least you can come back to train another day and keep it that way. Once you're able to train every day, there's that is the you just maxed out you pegged out you put the foot on the floor of the car you max that car out like you are going as fast as you possibly can go it's not about pushing it it's about making sure you're able to come in the next day and as long as you could do that you are you are on the fast track you are not making any mistakes there is nothing left to give do not fight your way through an arm bar do not fight your way live to fight another day and this is how you're going to beat everyone on the battlefield sooner than, than later. Yeah. So I think that's, that's my like main takeaway. And then like, just know that there, there's a lot of people out there that are um, talking and putting the shield up as in respect and honor and whatever. But really remember I said, go into the why you're saying that. And if that's because you're worried about getting you, you're worried that you're going to look bad for people. You're going to look bad on your coach. You're going to, nah, it's, it's you. It's, don't worry about that. Like, don't, don't make up shit. You know what I mean? Like focus on you and like, it's only temporary. If you've been there before, you're going to get there again. It's really that simple. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Cool. You got, you got anything? I think we just, we covered a lot of good shit. Right yeah. Now. We, yeah. I went, it, 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 you good? <laughs> no, no, I, I would, I would literally just say, you know, uh, for the guys that are working out every day, uh, just remember old guys like this guy right here, who put on some some nice weight, not in the right way. Uh, be nice to us. Appreciate it. I know I'm going to get my shit fucked up, especially from people like Lou. <laughs> I know Lou's been working they out. Pushing it. They pushing it. Yeah. He's like running, buying bikes. I don't know what he's doing. He's doing a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, nah, so just take it easy on the people that haven't been working out or might have been sick or, you know, might be old, you know. So I'm just <laughs> – But no, man, I, I really appreciate it. I think, we, I think that uh, really covers a lot of – of what to look for and and uh you know each person's individual progress and timeline is going to be different based off of what the, how long they were training um and whether or not they were being fit and, and active during this time and um, so forth like that and you just gotta you know re realign what you know where you are reassess and uh you know maybe talk to you talk to me talk to your coach if you're if you don't train with us uh, go talk to your coach man you know let them know uh like you know what your what your mindset is as well hopefully your coach is cool with that and and we'll talk to you about what they expect from you and and kind of create a, a timeline for you as well yeah like that's a great that's a great ending point like talk to your coach 
<laughs> you feel me? Like talk to your coach. And if it's not your coach and you move to another state and you're thinking about going back into it, talk to your coach, you know, like talk to, talk to, um, if you have that rapport with your old coach, do it. If you're talking to, if you're walking and checking out schools, talk to that coach, like get an idea of what you're going to hear, but you're definitely going to not going to hear, uh, yeah, you should probably demote yourself and blah, blah, blah. You're not going to hear that shit. <laughs> you're just Burn gonna your belt. Burn it's it. Like, it's like, hey, bro, just come in. Let's train, bro. Like, that's probably the most common answer. You can be like, you know what? You're thinking about it too much. Just come in and train, bro. Just don't get hurt. Let's go. You ready? You got your gi on you? No? All right, come back. With, let's just train. You know what? I got a gi in the back. How about you start today? You know what I mean? Like, uh, that's going to be the overwhelming, like, response. And if you, and again, if you don't have, these coaches or you do have a coach and he's not that receptive, talk to the brown belts, talk to the other black belts on the, you know what I mean? Like talk to someone you respect their opinion and then like ask them about shit. You know what I mean? Like one of the, one of the, uh, the secrets of jujitsu um, or actually mistakes that people make in jujitsu. The biggest one is that they don't ask enough questions. Simple as that. Like realize that you have, you have access to the world surrounding you. And you're not going to reach out and touch someone. You're not going to ask them something. You're not going to do that. Like, come on. Like I did that for 10 years and then it was like, Oh fuck. Why didn't I start asking questions sooner? You know what I mean? So that, that's the trick. And uh, if you guys have any questions or you have topics you want to talk about, or you want to ask me for help with anything, reach out. Um, uh, I'm going to try to get Edsel up in here as much as I can. He's a busy dude, uh, but reach out to us on Instagram. That's going to be where you can find me the most is, at from the dojo podcast or bame jujitsu um and you know i'm trying to help as many people as possible with this advice so if you got any questions let it rip because i'm trying to help all y'all you feel me so that's what's up thank you guys sounds good hey guys hope you enjoyed this episode if you have any subject requests or just want to chat feel free to reach out to Denny or I via DM through the Instagram handle at from the dojo podcast or via email at Daniel at from the dojo.com or Denny that's D E N N E Y at from the dojo.com. Looking forward to hearing from you.